Hi everyone, it's Vicky here, and after popular demand, today I'm back with a new art journal layout. I'll be working on my Moleskine sketchbook and I'm going to use Distress Oxide inks to do the background. Now, just because I'm not working on a piece of paper and um, I don't want to apply too much water directly on my book so that it doesn't uh, seep underneath and ruin other pages. And just because it's not easy to do this uh, movement on top of a mat, I decided to use a palette. So I created a palette of my own and uh, this is just a piece of of, uh, paper that I have uh, run it through my laminator and um, I made sure that it is white so that you can see exactly what I'm doing but at home you don't really need to create such a palette you can just use a piece of acetate so I am going to smooth my inks directly on top of this and I will be using uh, spray bottles to apply water just use any type of a spray bottle that you have so as you can see I'm going to smooth some of uh, the colors and uh, then I'm going to apply some water and then take this palette and directly place it on top of my pages. This way I am controlling the amount of, pay of water that I am applying on top of my book. And since this is not a watercolor book I don't want to add too much water that is going to ruin the pages but at the same time I do want to get that oxidized look that gives you that beautiful chalk finish at the end because that's the beauty of using distress oxides so I'm just smoothing there I am not worried about and at all about what I get for the first layer I just want to have a first layer there all I'm doing is just making sure that I apply enough color as my first layer I'm going to use a brush and just move some of that water making sure that it's not going to go inside that spine I'm also going to Close the pages so any excess water is going to stick on the other page. And then I'm going to grab my heat can and speed up the drying process. As you can see I'm not working back to back to another layout just to make sure that I will not ruin anything that's at the back. It's really easy to do, you don't have to think a lot and uh, real distress oxide inks do the work for you. You will see that I will keep uh, adding color upon color, layers upon layers and although I am going to add colors without thinking at all of the color theory, you will see that, we'll, that I will not end up having mud. I have just cleaned up my palette on my page there, again using my heat gun to dry all those splashes. And by the way, I haven't prepared my pages at all, I haven't applied any gesso or anything else, I'm just working directly on the pages. This way I help uh, the ink to be absorbed as well as the water. Now again I'm using the three colors that I have started with, applying water on top of my palette and then I'm going to turn it and do the other page. I decided to start with lighter colors but I will end up adding more and more darker colors as I go along. And you can see on screen right now the three colors that I used for the beginning and as I am introducing another color you will see it each time appear on your screen. And I'm not going to do any cutting or video editing uh, throughout uh, the background so that you can see how I achieved the beautiful background that I ended up having. So as you are watching me creating my background, I wanted to talk a little bit about my art journaling just uh, because I get so many questions and comments on my email and other social media. So I do create many layouts, but I don't share everything online. Some of my layouts go to my online classes or my live workshops and some others just uh, are made for fun. But I get uh, asked all the time to share more layouts on my YouTube channel. So I'm uh, going to share at least one every month and uh, if uh, my schedule allows it I am going to maybe share even more. 
Now, as you can see, I am uh, slowly going to darker colors, so I have introduced broken china, and uh, again, I am not paying any attention on uh, what I will end up having. I just want to create layers upon layers. You will see that at the end, it, li just like magic, you will get a beautiful result. I am uh, always drying in between. And now I'm going even darker with fired brick and vintage photo. Again, I'm applying a little bit of ink with my ink pad on my palette. I am applying some water and then again, I'm going to smoosh it on top of my paper. I'm applying a little bit and then I will go ahead and heat dry it. I repeat this process again and again until I am happy with my background. And now, just because I love splashes, I am cleaning up my palette. And now I'm going to apply some fire brick. I am adding water. And with my brush, I'm going to add splashes to both my pages. I'm going to repeat the same process with another color. I went with green, but made a mistake here. So I'm quickly switching to peeled paint. I, again, without even uh, cleaning up my brush, I'm adding some uh, splashes. It sure is a lot of fun to play with your Distress inks and uh, you end up uh, creating beautiful backgrounds. Now I'm going to show you that you can go over your pages and intensify the color if you want to. So you can see that I'm going over with peeled paint which is going to make my page look brighter. But uh, if you don't like this look, you can go over it with your spray bottle, apply some water and this is going to make uh, the ink um, react and it's going to give back that uh, chalk finish, that oxidized look. Now I'm using Vintage Photo Distress Oxide and I'm going all around the edges. I always like to have darker edges because uh, it kind of frames my art and it gives that uh, finished look. And now let's use a few techniques on the background to make it look more interesting. So first I'm using a stencil from the latest collection by Tim Holtz and I'm going over it with my blending tool. Again I'm using Distress Oxide ink and this time I'm using Fired Brick. I'm applying some ink in different areas of my pages. I don't want to cover up everything, I just want to add some interest here and there. And also I'm going to spray with water. So the water is going to activate again the ink that is underneath and it's going to create beautiful results. I am cleaning up my stencil. I'm going to use this paper towel to dry my page, remove all the excess water. And my background is looking beautiful already. It's, uh, there are so many things going on and so many different layers of uh, color, one on top of the other. I am making sure that everything is nice and dry because I am planning to stamp now. This is a new stamp set by Tim Holtz and uh, Stampers Anonymous. It's called Etc. and I'm going to use one of those um, stamps to create some interest on my background. Again, I'm using Distress Oxide ink to stamp and this time I'm using Vintage Photo, which is going to be quite subtle since I have already used that color on my background. But at the same time, you are able to tell that I have stamped something at the background. I wouldn't go and stamp with a black ink in this stage because I already have a lot of things going on at my background and uh, if I used black ink it would be super vibrant and um, it would steal the thunder of my focal points that I am planning to stamp later on. So in this stage I would recommend to use an ink that you have already introduced on your background. Now I'm going to switch to this uh, round one. I'm going to stamp in uh, various places again just to add some interest on my background. Again, I'm not going for the perfect uh, impression. After all, this is an art journal. We need things to be imperfect and organic looking. And uh, just to bring everything together, I'm going to give it a quick spray which is going to move the ink just a little bit and blend it with everything that is already there. And again, I'm going to dry everything with my heat gun. And at this stage, I'm really happy with how my background is looking. So I'm going to finish it off by adding just a touch of black at the outer edge of my pages. For this, I am using Distress Ink and that's black suit, but you can use any black ink that you have on hand. 
And in my opinion, you can never have uh, enough splashes. So I have uh, smoothed my black suit Distress Ink on my palette there. I am applying some water and now with a thin brush, I'm going to add some splashes, very thin splashes, but very tiny ones, so that they don't overwhelm my background. And again, I used my heat gun to make sure everything was dry. And here is a close-up look on uh, my background. It's one of those backgrounds that uh, they look so complicated and people when watch at them think that um, it was super difficult to make. But that was really easy. It was just layers upon layers of oxide ink. Now I'm going to bring in this amazing stamp. I fell in love with those uh, guys the moment I saw them on Tim's uh, video. So I am going to use three of them. I just chose three random ones, but I think that goat is amazing. I can't stop watching at that uh, face. Anyway, I am going to stamp uh, all three of them in this uh, piece of paper. And this happens to be a Manila paper by Ranger. And I will make sure that uh, you will find links down below in the description area as well as on my blog on everything that I used today for creating this uh, layout. Now I'm going to stamp everything with archival link and I'm working on this uh, cardstock just because it takes uh, distress ink and water beautifully and you will see how I'm going to color everything using my distress oxide inks and um, I'm going to follow a very loose way of coloring. You will see me doing my shading with uh, again just distress oxide inks and how easy it is to blend everything together. Now I have my three little guys uh, there. I am using my scissors to cut around them. And I'm not going to fuss too much about those hair on uh, this guy because I am going to go ahead and stamp him directly on my page later on. So when I stick him, I will have all that detail that I need. Here are all the guys cut out and ready to go. I am trying to decide the placement and once I'm happy with uh, when, where everyone is going to stay, I'm going to stamp uh, that guy first so that I can get all the detail that I need for his hair. And uh, there is also that goat guy who is uh, holding on his mouth a stalk of uh, wheat. And uh, I'm going to stamp him as well just to make sure that I get that detail. So now I'm going to color my three guys and this time instead of using any other typical coloring method I'm going to show you how you can use your Distress Oxide inks to color everything. So for this guy I'm using uh, fossilized uh, amber for his head just because he is uh, obviously yellow. I used my finger dabbers to apply my ink and now I'm going to use a Fantastix that has a nice tip that you can touch the ink pad. And uh, now I'm coloring his beak and I'm going to add some shadow. To do that I'm bringing a uh, vintage photo. Again I'm touching uh, the ink. I'm adding on only one side of his face and on his beak. And I don't really care if those colors blend. You will see at the end that I'm going to quickly spray him with water which is going to help everything ta come together. Super easy to do and uh, it gives that uh, quick uh, organic look that goes perfectly with the background and with this loose sketchy design of these guys. So for his costume I am using again my finger dapper. I'm going over it with a uh, fired brick. I'm going to add some shadow quickly with my brown there and then again I'm going to spray which is going to blend everything together. And he's looking really good. I'm going to leave him on one side and continue to the next one. I will continue the same technique for every one of these guys. I'm going to put on some music and you can see how I colored everyone.
So by using this technique, you see the great results that I got on coloring these guys. But remember that I, am wo I was working on a mixed media paper, which really makes a difference. And uh, now I'm going all around these guys with my Distress Oxide ink again, but this time with Vintage Photo, just to get rid of that uh, white edge. And now I'm ready to stick them down. Now as I am placing them on top of my page, I see that they don't stand out as much as I want to. So I want to create some shadow just behind them. And that's why I'm using again my blending tool and some vintage photo. And I'm going to add uh, just a little bit of uh, brown there. Not too much, I'm not extending that too far away. But this is going to help uh, these guys stand even more against the busy background. And I am doing that now, before I go ahead and stick them down, just to make my life easier. Now for sticking these guys down, you can use your uh, tape adhesive, you can use your glue stick, you can use any type of uh, uh, adhesive that you like. If you use matte medium, remember not to cover them up or to go over uh, the pages with your matte medium, because this is going to smudge and smear and it's going to ruin your background. So notice that I have applied my matte medium only at the back of my guys. And I'm not going to cover them up as I would normally do. And of course I forgot to stick the guy at the background first, so I have to peel off uh, the guys in the front to stack him at the back. But just because matte medium doesn't dry so quickly, I still have time to do that. Now I'm going to use my scissors to cut out the excess. And now it's time to do some doodling. I am going to use my permanent marker. This is a thin marker by Posca. And I'm going to go over their glasses. I'm going to give them eyes again, just because I want them to be more vibrant and stand out. And um, I'm also going to do some highlightings with my white gel pen. Now these guys on my page are talking and they are talking a lot. So I'm going to give them speech bubbles so you can see what they are saying. And uh, for that I'm going to use my Big Shot machine. I'm going to die cut some speech bubbles. These are dies that I have by Penny Black. They are quite old but I think they are still available. If I can find them I will add the link down below in the description area. In case you don't have any dies that cut out speech bubbles and you are going for the same look you can always draw them by hand and just cut them out with your scissors. So now that I have my speech bubbles I'm going to stamp some of the same the sayings from the same stamp set as the hipsters. I am stamping everything with black archival ink because I am planning to add some distress oxide ink on top of those speech bubbles and then spray them with water and this is going to make sure that my stamped uh, words are not going to smudge or smear.
And after adding uh, that uh, vintage photo on all my speech bubbles, I'm also going with black suit all around the edges. And this is going to bring everything together since that's what I did for all the other images. Now I'm going to decide the placement and then I'm going to stick them down. Now I turned these uh, speech bubbles into stickers by using my Xyron sticker maker just to avoid matte medium and to make my life easier. So I'm pressing them down just to make sure that uh, they are nicely turned into stickers. I'm peeling off the backing and I'm going to place them on top of my guys. So now you know that they are talking a lot and uh, they are judging every time and all the time. And that's uh, why I'm going to stamp my quote for this page, which is going to be, frankly, I don't care what others say. So now that I have cut out the excess, I'm going over with black suit on the edges. I am going to add some um, doodling all around the speech bubbles just to bring the same look with the guys onto the speech bubbles as well. And really details like that bring everything together. So now my page is ready for the quote. For my quote, I am going to use these new alphabet uh, sets by Tim Holtz. These are from his latest collection and uh, they are actually foam clink stamps. They are going to clink on my acrylic block beautifully. You will see how I'm going to use that. And I'm going to combine both the upper and the lower uh, alphabet. And uh, what I love about these is that just because they are not rubber, they are foam, you can squeeze them even more and it gives beautiful result even on a bulky art journal. You will see how beautiful it's going to stamp. It was the first time I tried them and I'm really, really happy with the results and uh, I am going to use them again and again on my art journal. Now you see how beautiful the stamp and if you are an art journaler, probably you know that uh, stamping letters on top of an art journal is kind of difficult just because you don't get a nice impression because of all that bulky book. Now it clings beautifully on top of my uh, blog so I can stamp more than one letters at a time. And as you can see I have stamped uh, two of the words in uh, uppercase just to emphasize those words even more. Now one of the things that I always like to do on my letters is to go on one side of the letters and add some highlight. For that I'm using my white Signo gel pen. And to me, that highlighting on the letters really makes a big difference. Now, just because I don't want to stop playing with my layout today, I'm going over their glasses and I'm using my Nouveau Drops. And this one, that the one that I'm using, dries totally clear. And this little detail really helps to bring those guys to life. I'm really happy with the outcome. I really, really love this art journal layout and I think those guys are just hilarious. So that was the layout for today. I hope you had fun and got inspired. And if you did, don't forget to leave me a comment as well as give me a thumbs up on my YouTube channel. Don't forget that you can find a full list of all the supplies that I used today down below in the description area as well as on my blog. Here are some close-up photos of the layout that I made today. And if you need more inspiration, here are two more art journal layouts that I have created a while back. Thank you all for watching!